Hello everyone. Today you'll be actually experiencing running real world workloads on Project Monterey Cluster. This is in the NVIDIA Launchpad environment. In order for you to access the NVIDIA Launchpad environment, go to the site NVIDIA Launchpad and then once you're there, you can go to the infrastructure optimization tab, access the, the VMware lab and register. Once you register for the lab, you'll be sent a link to the different labs for Project Monterey. Now, in this case, I'm going to talk about a lab where you're actually going to run Redis as an application workload. Now, this lab consists of five different sections. The first section is getting to know your environment where you'll be logging into the cluster, playing around with the server and the client as well as understanding some of the tools required to run the test. Next, what we'll do is run a baseline test. And this baseline test consists of running, disabling the UPT mode for Project Monterey and running the test. And then the after test is making sure that UPT is turned on and then you run the same bench benchmark tests. And then finally, you'll compare the test results. You can also use this environment to launch different workloads or other uh, benchmarks if you want. So let's get started. So let's, let's talk about what the environment is about. Now, as you can see, like we have two hosts on, on the cluster, ESXi1 and ESXi host2, and each of the, the VMs uh, are running on these two different hosts. Now, the server, the Redis server is running on host one, where we'll actually start four different instances of the Redis server working on four different ports. On the second part, which is the client, we'll run the memtier benchmark, which will bombard the server with different requests. We've also provided a few scripts in order for you to make uh, to run the lab, uh, such as starting the Redis server, stopping the Redis server, or even like making sure uh, to see what is the driver version that you're using in order to check if the UPT is turned on or not. So as you proceed in the lab, you will be guided through different steps of logging into the ESXi, enabling and disabling uh, UPT, as well as like making sure that uh, the environment is ready to go. Now, what we'll do is we will actually go to the vSphere and start uh, the lab over there. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is I've logged in into my vSphere client. And what I'll see is there are different servers, different VMs that are already up and running. Now, if for this lab, we are interested in two VMs, the Redis server, as well as the benchmark client one. That's what we'll be using. Now, what in order for us to access the, the web console, uh, you can launch it through the web console or the lab will have a link, direct link uh, to, to the web console. Now, in this case, what I've done is that I've already logged in into the, the Redis server. And what you'll see here is that there are different directories. The most important thing here is in the scripts directory where you'll be able to start and stop the Redis server as well as two scripts called MKUPT and RMUPT that will help you disable and enable the, the UPT mode for the driver. And check VMX driver version will give you the version number of the driver. So I'm going to first run the check VMX driver stuff and it's asking me for the sudo password. I enter that and I see that the version number is 1.7. What it means is UPT is turned on. Now for the baseline test, what we really need is disabling the UPT mode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the RM UPT script, which will in turn go and disable the UPT mode. Now, if I run the test check uh, VMX script again, you'll see that the version number is now 1.4.17. You can also double check by going to the vSphere client and what you'll notice is that they'll, you'll see an alarm popping up saying that UPT has been deactivated on one of the adapters. 
So that's a good sign because now you know that UPT is really turned off. Next, what we'll do is we will start the servers. And in this case, I'm just making sure first whether all the Redis servers have been stopped. Uh, so now they are stopped and I am starting the Redis servers again. So once I start the servers, there are four instances of these servers ready and ready to be bombarded from the client. Next, we'll move to the client. So going back to the ESXi, I go to the client, I go to web console, and now I am back into the client. Uh, in, inside the client, there are again the same directory structure. I go to the scripts and run the latency test. Now, in order for me to run the latency test, it's going to ask me for a time interval. And the time interval means that uh, for every bombard the server for five seconds and see what, what the latency is. So it will first do this, it runs and it will show you that the latency is about 1.3, uh, 1.3, 1.2, whatever milliseconds. So that's that's a number that we need to just keep track of for now. I'm gonna hit Control C without which the test doesn't stop. So I hit the Control C. So given that like now we have started, uh, we know the base of the latency, I'm gonna run the mem tier test. Now, in order for us to run the mem tier test, I'm going to call it because this is the no UPT test. I am going to call the no UPT.sh test. Now, what this does is it starts bombarding, it starts 10 different threads uh, with so many operations going on. So you can see very easily that's uh, doing an average of 85,000 uh, operations per second. And the operations means there are reads and writes happening simultaneously over here. And you'll also see that the, the latency, average latency is about 5.85, now it's six. So you'll see that that's what is happening uh, with, with this test. Now that the test is complete, uh, we will go back into the results directory here. And I will go to results and vi the results sorry results dot no upt dot results and what you'll see here is the number of operations are around 80000 operations per second the latency is around 6.32 milliseconds and the the bandwidth uh, or the throughput was 17 thousand 17k nearly 17k megabytes per second so we'll keep this file and now we've completed the baseline test so in order for us to run the 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 upt test we have to go back to the server and enable the upt mode again so let's let's actually do that i'm going to make upt and with make upt i will also run the check vmx driver version so now it's changed to 1.7 and i will start and stop the the redis instances just to make sure that we are starting from a clean slate and now have four instances of the redis server running just to make sure that upt is turned on i go back to the vsphere client and if I click on the Redis server, I don't see any alarms at all now. So that's a good sign. Uh, so what we'll do next is go to the benchmark client and uh, run the, the both the scripts, basically the latency script as well as the performance script. So the first step is to run the latency test. It's going to ask me for an interval. And I start that. Uh, so it's much lower. It's 1.05 uh, at this point, much lower than what we saw earlier. I think it was a 1.4 or 1.3. So that's that's good. So now that we see this, I'm going to hit Control C, and uh, like we know, the basic latency is uh, approximately that. Uh, the next step, as we said, is we're going to run the the script for uh, the actual performance test. So I'm going to run perf test with upt turned on 
and now you'll see that it's the same exact same test but it's going much much faster than what we were seeing earlier uh, we also see that the number of operations is pretty high uh, in this case it's around 300,000 operations and the average is about 1.6 milliseconds uh, so that's pretty good so now let's go back to the results and vi the results dot uh, dash upt dot text so here you'll see that uh, the operations per second is around 240k that's an average uh, and what you'll also see is the average latency is 2.11 and the bandwidth or the uh, utilization was throughput was 50.862 uh, kilobytes or 50 point uh, megabytes per second so you can very clearly see that uh, the operations have gone up and uh, that's the latency uh, uh, that's the that's the performance that you'll see, be seeing now with upt turned on uh, what what we are not showing here but it is very very apparent if you start looking at the console logs is that the number of cpu cores that get used uh, will also be minimized so in case of the upt version pretty much there'll be no, no cores that we used from the networking side, right? Most of the work will be done by the Bluefield DPU. So with that, uh, like what you will also see is like finally, like, you know, uh, the results in, in the lab, you'll be able to compare and contrast uh, with UPT and without UPT, what the results were. Uh, so in this case, when, when I ran the test, uh, this is what I saw. Now, with that, uh, we have come to the end of the lab and uh, like, you know, I, I, would, I would suggest that you go in and play with different parameters uh, of, of the MEM test and see like how you can actually vary and see better performance numbers as well. Thank you for watching.